Dr. Malani, a colleague, is responding to because the time for submission is in the evening. Yes, uh, Council from the National Assembly. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm just concluding that uh, it's an impeachable offence to yes. make the link. Very well. Now I'll conclude. Yes, so, Mr. Speaker, sir, if you look at then the evidence which has been submitted by uh, Dr. Mulwa, that he received a call from the Deputy President, who is a high-ranking state official, to go to ES, and, and then he went to ESCC to collect evidence which ESCC had gathered for purposes uh, of, of, of submitting that tender to the, uh, to the Deputy President uh, or his conduct, in this case his son. Then what we are saying is that that act by the Deputy President then uh, uh, constitutes a violation of the provisions of the Leadership and Integrity Act, specifically Section 34 of the Leadership and Integrity Act, and that amounts to bullying. And to that extent, we are submitting uh, that that charge has indeed been substantiated in all its four corners. On the second question, and here again, it appears there is a, a misnomer. To prove an economic crime, you don't need to prove that there was loss of funds. An economic crime in this case occurs when a sitting deputy president in a tendering process, he makes a call which the recipient then uh, interprets in a different way, perhaps to influence the tendering process or perhaps to, uh, for, for certain decisions to be made in favor of that person. And the person who is making the call is a sitting deputy president. That is why then the provisions of the, uh, the Constitution prohibit Mr. conflict Speaker, of interest. Sir, if you may, uh, I think um, my learned friend has enjoyed a lot of latitude in respect to responding to issues that were not sought for clarification. I was taking note of all the issues that were sought. And the issue that council is responding to are not among those that were sought. And if they were, then you need to indicate from which particular senator did seek that. Council for National Assembly, reserve other matters for submission. Yeah, uh, Mr. Speaker, so I'm responding to the question of whether there was loss of uh, funds. That was not sought for it clarification. It was sought by a senator. And, uh, it was sought. It yeah, was sought. It was sought. It was sought. Yeah. One minute. Yeah. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, in this case, evidence has been led. If you look at it from one perspective, evidence has been led by Dr. Mulwa that indeed there was a delay in this procurement. Secondly, fewer nets were supplied. Thirdly, there was a question concerning the costs incurred in this tendering process. And the evidence was that 55 million shillings was incurred in this tendering process. It came from the mouth of Dr. Mulwa. So to that extent, you can see there were some laws. Whereas the tender was financed by the Global Fund, from our own perspective, we lost a lot, not only from a monetary perspective, but also from the other factors. What about Kenyans who did not access this malaria, uh, uh, these mosquito nets and were exposed to malaria? Is that not a loss which is non-monetary and therefore uh, to that extent, one can make a conclusion that the conduct of the deputy president in this regard uh, violates the provisions of Section 34 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. Mr. Speaker, sir, I end by stating that we have fully substantiated uh, ground number 11, and it's one of those grounds where the evidence is clear, conspicuous, and there is a nexus to the deputy president himself through a phone call that he made to Dr. Mulua, and he has admitted making that phone call. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Honorable Senators.